Uh, and with that uh, announcement, we'll do share screen. And we'll get this up here. Are you all seeing my slide? Yep, they look great. It looks good. Okay. All right. I just want to go back a little bit about this. Uh, we said we're getting to the new world, right? So wait a minute. Uh, what do you mean new world? So around 20,000 years ago, um, Homo sapiens in their restless phase walked across this land bridge, um, which is now uh, Alaska is carved up, uh, but the seas rose and uh, molded Alaska and separated the Bering Straits, separated it from Asia, uh, Russia. Um, and so, um, the human beings have evolved together for 90% of their life. It's just this last 10%, the last 20,000 years, we've been separated. So it's not new, uh, it's just separated. Um, and yeah, I almost wonder what it was like in the days when the seas were rising here and you had people living in what we now call Alaska, and the seas were getting higher and higher and they could no longer walk back. And what was it like for the last person who couldn't walk back across to see cousins? What was it like when the seas kept rising and got too high for even boats to go um, back and forth? If, if, if there were boats, it was the ice age. Um, and so, uh, that that's just a, a fascinating th thing for me. So the, there is nothing new about this world that the people went into for the last ten percent of human the sapiens uh, evolution. It was they were separated in a way marooned here. But who's to say this is old and this is new? So the, the even the term new world. Um, uh, for, uh, betrays a, uh, uh, a, a Euro Asia centric um, uh, viewpoint. Um, so I just I just found that interesting, um, and I, and just noodling around, um, uh, you, I, I was thinking, well, where else in the world um, was this a problem besides the Bering Strait in Alaska? Well, um, uh, Britain, uh, the English Channel, you could walk from France to uh, England. So I looked that up and it was uh, about six, eight, uh, 9,000 years ago that um, the water filled the English Channel and you could no longer walk across. So that maybe was about the same time. Uh, so um, the, um, what we call the new world has been marooned for maybe a, around that same amount of time, 8,000 uh, years. Um, and you follow this, this curve back, this is where we are uh, now, and this is the, the sea level, and the sea level um, 8,000, uh, let's, let's go 10,000 years ago, um, was 40 me, uh, meters um, lower. Um, so it's a, that's the way you, you read this graph. And, and you see that the, uh, uh, the, the, that's just the, the last uh, 10,000 years. You go back 24,000 and you have the last maximal uh, capture of water for ice, the glacial maximum. So it, it's just interesting to put human history into geological uh, history. Um, uh, so uh, it's not really the new world, it's just a, a, a marooned world, if you will, or a separated world. 
And I found this um, again, looking for uh, Juan Jose on pre-Columbian uh, American civilizations. And I uh, uh, liked him being a map dork. I like uh, uh, different kinds of maps to help me keep things straight uh, visually. And what we're gonna be talking about uh, mostly today is Mesoamerica, right, right in here. This is really the first civilization uh, uh, to take off. And as Juan, Juan Jose pointed out last week, there's a lot of really, really interesting things uh, going on here. And uh, we've um, uh, taken the option to tell straight through the whole uh, European Asian uh, story first. Um, Africa um, is uh, oriented north south, uh, kind of like the, the uh, New World, uh, which um, is, was a disadvantage. We talked about that uh, last time, but the um, uh, Europe and Asia being on the same east west axis, there was a lot of more opportunities to learn from other. Uh, people's ad advances and share in information, connectivity, <laughs> if, <coughs> if you will. So we're going to focus on Mesoamerica. Um, uh, <coughs> first, uh, I'll say a, a couple of words about the Mississippi culture, and eventually we'll get to South America. <coughs> um, and the reason that uh, Central uh, America, Mesoamerica takes off first is the complex farming. You need complex farming. You need to generate surplus uh, to um, uh, develop a civilization. That, that's a first requirement. And we discovered that with Juan Jose when we were talking about um, the river civilizations when we limited ourselves to the so-called um, old world. The uh, green represents the simple farming. Um, everything else would be hunter gatherers, hunter gatherers. Um, and uh, the, I'm just re-showing this. This is the cumulative map of the civilizations that did develop um, in the so-called new world. And we're going to spend most of the time talking about the first one, the Olmec which located uh, right, right in here. And they began uh, somewhere around 1400. That's conservative. Other say it's really 1600s, um, reached their peak around 800. And then it, by 400 BCE, um, they've collapsed. And then we'll, we'll look at the, um, uh, to, we'll look both to the north to see uh, which kind of uh, military uh, civilizations start coming down from the north, more warrior-like, more uh, aggressive. And we'll also <clears throat> look to the south to see how the Mayans picked up on Olmec cultures. But the Olmecs were the, the mother culture. Everybody uh, uh, recognizes that. They were the uh, mother uh, culture. And uh, this is just that same map blown up. This is where we're going to spend some uh, time uh, today looking. Um, and look at the, the geography here. It's going to be important. There's a, a, a waste to um, uh, Central America, a narrowing. Some people even call it an isthmus. Now it's much bigger than in Panama, um, but it's still an, an isthmus. And uh, that's gonna be interesting. I didn't appreciate that until um, I did this. And so look at that waistband. What else you notice here is a break in the mountains. Huh, that's interesting. And uh, that's going to result in um, talk about building the canal here because it's so much closer than Panama to the, the Gulf of Mexico uh, uh, trade. Um, there's talk of it. Um, it doesn't happen for um, uh, many reasons, some political 
Um, it could have happened. Um, and what is, is they build instead is, is a train, and we'll talk about that. So I want to make connections between the uh, uh, geography, uh, the reason that the first uh, civilization is here, but what are the other consequences of the ge uh, geography that we can connect to the present, just to fix it in our mind. And there's some other things going on down here that we can fix this area in our mind, the first civilization. Um, this is even clearer. I mean, the print's not clearer, but the mountain, the break in the mountains uh, uh, is clear. So this, this is unique. Um, and so here we are. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, this is a bona fide um, fifth river civilization. We, the way we've learned history, well, there are four river civilizations. No, there are five. Um, if we take into consideration our mar marooned and separated uh, brothers uh, in the so-called uh, New World. Uh, so there's five. And uh, here are the rivers. These, you have rivers to the north that empty into the Gulf of uh, Mexico, and you have rivers uh, to the south. So the watershed is uh, uh, right uh, here. Um, and so there was uh, uh, po possible uh, communication all across this, this uh, isthmus. Uh, Tuantepec, um, so Tuantepec is, is here. This is the Gulf of Tuantepec. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, modern history in Tuantepec just to fix this in our mind and connect it to things we know about. Because look what the name of this region is, Oaxaca, Oaxaca. Um, Tuantepec, isolated here uh, on the map, just to fix it in your mind, right at, at the, the southern end of, of the, the isthmus, the, the waste here. This is Yucatan, this is going to be all Mayan. And up north, we're going to get uh, Teotihuacano, Toltecs, um, eventually uh, Aztecs coming down from the north. But it all starts here and spreads uh, uh, north and south. Um, and this is uh, the, the, the most immediate successor, the Zapotec civilization. So look, at the, the center of the Zapotec civilization is just not far at all from uh, the waistband. Um, and they took on a lot of their um, uh, Olmec characteristics and, and overlapped with Olmecs. They, uh, Zapotecs go back to um, 700 BCE. So they overlap and, and uh, arguably in their early days are, are just a, an Olmec uh, branch. Um, and we're familiar with it because we've taken vacation to Oaxaca and we've visited uh, Monte Alban and we've <laughs> crawled in the caves. Tim will remember uh, that um, uh, around Monte Alban. And, and Mitla is another. Um, and so this was built around 500 BCE. So quite, quite uh, old uh, as, as well. Um, and this is uh, the Oaxaca where we've all vacationed to. Um, I, I just put it into Google uh, Maps. It's a very windy road, but uh, it, it's uh, uh, only, uh, what is that, uh, point, uh, six of it. it's only 150 miles or so. Um, and, uh, but it takes uh, four hours because of, of, of the roads. So Oaxaca, just to give you a connection. So I'm reading a lot about this uh, isthmus and some things pop out at me. What, wait a minute, Zapotec. 
uh, might be uh, uh, matriarchal. It's, it's hard uh, to get a fix on that for Zapotec culture as a whole, but for sure, Tuana Tepec City is uh, dominated by uh, a matriarchy. Women uh, 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 control the local markets and they uh, uh, have uh, the culture of taunting men, even questioning their ma masculinity, uh, uh, teasing them to get them to come and, and look at what they, they, they have uh, to sell. Um, uh, uh, mostly material merchandise, one would assume. And th this is interesting to uh, Aiko and me because on the uh, Indian reservation, both the Hopi and uh, Navajo um, are matriarchal uh, societies um, and all that that means. Um, and uh, this is uh, the, 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 the typical uh, market vendor you would encounter on the, the streets, um, uh, teasing relationship, but a striking uh, uh, dress, the lace, uh, uh, national repute, even making it uh, on the uh, 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 a bill, and uh, impressing uh, Frida Kahlo, um, who uh, adopted uh, and identified uh, uh, with the Tejuana uh, women. Um, and uh, also in this uh, uh, painting, this was uh, uh, expressing the pain that she had on learning that her, that Diego Rivera um, uh, was having an affair with, with her sister. Uh, so I, one more person I want to talk about uh, is a prominent Tejuana, um, and uh, this lady, Juana Romero. Um, and she had an affair with uh, Porfirio uh, Diaz that lasted uh, 40 years. Um, uh, and he was married to someone else, uh, but uh, uh, in the, with the, the uh, tradition of strong women, it, in, uh, this uh, it didn't uh, matter uh, to her reputation uh, at all. Um, uh, she was referred to as uh, his amante, quite simple. There's a, a, a statue to her in the Zocalo, very misleading. She's shown reading a book. What she was, was a wheeler dealer. She was a businesswoman. She made a ton of money and she built this house. And that railroad I was telling you about earlier, she was so um, plugged in uh, that she made sure the railroad was built to go right by her house. So uh, the, uh, that's, that's fascinating to me. Um, the, here, here's the announcement of the railroad uh, being built. It's built before the uh, uh, Panama uh, Canal um, and re required uh, a, a lot of engineering work to complete that railroad. This is a, uh, a, a bi-coastal um, uh, uh, civilization. Think about that. What other civilization could reach two different oceans? Um, sure, there were there were some that could reach two different bodies of water, but uh, two oceans. Um, and this is the uh, route that the train took across this this isthmus um, and to the Gulf of. Uh, uh, Tijuana uh, Tepec, um, and this was, however, the lowlands that that had to be addressed. So it wasn't it wasn't simple, um, but the the train runs through uh, the cities. Now this woman, um, uh, Juana Romero. Uh, uh, was played by Selma Hayek in a uh, production for Mexican television. 
obviously she also played uh, Frida Kahlo. I, I think uh, in both situations, she wore the local uh, Tijuana uh, dress, but it, when she played Freda, I think you could tell the difference by the eyebrows, right? This is that uh, house that uh, Juana uh, Cata, that was her middle name is Catalina. So she's known as uh, Juana Cata as well. Uh, and th the house uh, still stands though, uh, abandoned in, in, in ruins. But um, there is such a strong uh, mat matriarchal feeling uh, to this area um, that they've uh, er erected this uh, huge uh, uh, monument uh, to uh, the women of, of the area. Now, we can't know much about Olmec society because they didn't uh, have writing. Um, all we have to go on are clues. And um, I think this is interesting that the, the, the matriarchy part, I sure would like to uh, know if that came down from uh, Olmec society in, in the very early years. It's got to be on the table as, as a possible um, theory for what we're, we're seeing in uh, the Isthmus uh, uh, culture. Um, and here she is, uh, determined, brave. Uh, and uh, so um, I, I did a little search on it. And when you Google something these days, interesting things pop up. So after an earthquake, um, the women in the Muxus takes uh, take charge after a massive quake. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Somebody help me. Um, so, uh, but here the, uh, is a report from this city. Um, and uh, the city is, is here. Um, a, a lot of damage from the earthquakes. You see it's not far um, uh, at all from the, 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 the key uh, isthmus, the narrowing. Uh, and uh, this is a, a transgender uh, woman. Uh, this uh, uh, area is very accepting of uh, a transgender um, uh, traditionally. And they organized and worked with the women of the city in particular uh, to organize uh, uh, relief. So, I mean, this is interesting to me. And, and uh, we're going to see when we get to the uh, Mayas that there is a tradition of um, uh, uh, Mayan uh, queens. So again, we, we have a, a, an echo of this, maybe more than any of the other four river civilizations do you have uh, 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 the, the possibility that women are playing a much uh, bigger role uh, and that being separated for uh, uh, 20,000 years, maybe it gave civilization a fresher start and, and evolved in a way wh where uh, uh, women might have uh, had more uh, re uh, responsibility or did have it for um, uh, a few thousand years. Um, and just uh, thinking about Mayan um, uh, women, um, immediately what came to uh, mind was uh, Rigoberto Manchu. And we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about how you should visit local uh, historical places. Um, this, uh, folks, is in the Mission District. This is in the, uh, uh, this is the woman's building in the Mission District, uh, where um, over 100 women specifically are uh, celebrated uh, in the murals um, on, on this uh, building. Um, and she is uh, uh, leading at the top. The painting was, uh, the mural was done probably sometime around when uh, she got the uh, uh, Nobel P uh, Peace Prize for her community uh, work um, in defense of uh, uh, Native 
peoples. This is uh, the other side. So it's, it's two sides uh, to, this is the front side, this is the entrance. The other side is the, actually the side street um, to the woman's building. So if you haven't been over there to spend uh, um, uh, a half hour with uh, engaging with these murals, I, I recommend it. And here's where it is, um, right uh, uh, near 18th and Guero. Um, uh, not a far walk at all from a BART station uh, on 16th Street. Uh, so th the last thing I said, well, huh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's uh, reflected all in, in modern uh, politics. So uh, you go to your friend Google and, and uh, what's the uh, percent of um, parliaments uh, or congresses that are uh, women and the, the blue is uh, the heaviest uh, concentration and you can see Mexico is, uh, is, is among that. Uh, and so what are the reasons for that? Well, uh, there are probably uh, 20 reasons, but one of them has to be um, the uh, uh, traditions that were handed down by the first civilization. And a lot of this is conjecture, uh, but that's why I like history. I like to make connections and, and come up with possible explanations uh, because there's so much we don't know. So if we don't have a lot of uh, guessing going on, we're not thinking hard enough. Um, so to get back on what we know about the Olmec instead of my conjectures, um, let's, let, uh, let's get back to that. And here is the uh, Olmec heartland. This is where it really uh, took off on, on the northern rivers, not the southern rivers, on the northern uh, uh, rivers. Um, and there are uh, really uh, specific uh, sites where they found the, the artifacts. Um, and some of them, some artifacts I'll be talking about have come from far away, like here. Um, getting close to what would become the, the Zapotec uh, evolution. So their artifacts are, are all around, but this is where they were probably made. This was where the surplus was um, uh, put together to allow the leisure time for artists to make things. Um, and uh, we've already co uh, covered this. This is just a close close up of the same uh, areas and the key uh, sites that uh, have been uh, excavated. Um, so this is the the characteristic. This is the the statue I remember um, from or uh, one similar to it in the, the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, an excellent um, museum if, if you haven't had the chance uh, to go there. And the, the key things that are, are mentioned are the deep, deep set eyes, the flared nostrils, and a slightly asymmetrical mouth, which I had never uh, appreciated at all. If I stare at that, okay, maybe it slants down a little that way. Um, but the, here it slants a, a little bit uh, the other way. And th the appearance, uh, um, uh, well, well, maybe the, 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 this was had some African influence uh, somehow. And that, that's, that's been uh, dismissed. Um, based on uh, the epicanthal fold. So what's the epicanthal fold? It's what we see in, uh, th that gives Asians the, the cast of eye and it's th this fold right here. And apparently the, the sculpture, um, uh, uh, all of the Olmec sculpture has the epicanthal fold. The other thing is uh, th they, they have discovered and, and found ancient Olmec uh, uh, DNA, uh, mitochondrial DNA, um, and, and ex exclusively uh, uh, New World. 
Um, so uh, extraneous uh, uh, theories uh, can can be considered in, in evidence accumulated and in judgments um, um, made. The other thing I'd point out is the helmet. Um, so a, a lot of Olmec uh, 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 sculptures, they're, they're wearing helmets in the one theory is that uh, it was to keep the soul in the head, that the, the, they had made a connection uh, between uh, uh, the head and, and thinking, um, uh, but, but who knows. Uh, some of the uh, sculpture is quite striking. Um, this uh, uh, captures action. Uh, and I was, I was uh, delighted to see uh, something like this. There'll be others. Um, uh, th this, uh, again, the helmet um, uh, on this uh, seated uh, figurine. So it, the range goes from little figurines uh, to uh, colossal huge statues, like the first two that we looked at. Um, and then working with, uh, with different colors, making, uh, 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 items that can function and have a function in the uh, house. Um, the uh, uh, di different uh, uh, forms are, are kind of uh, uh, massive and uh, uh, without refinement, called uh, colossal. Uh, mosaics uh, were also uh, found. Um, in uh, the, those uh, northern sites. Um, and then a lot of uh, ornamental uh, masks uh, made out of different materials. This one's a, a serpentine. You'll see jade and jadeite um, here, uh, another uh, mask. And uh, the, uh, uh, this area produced more jade than, than any other. Uh, area. Um, another mask. Um, and then tattoos, uh, uh, cinnabar ta tattoos uh, were added. So ornamentation uh, uh, to the uh, uh, face. So now we get into a little bit of uh, their animism. So they made a lot out of the jaguar. And so here you have a cave painting of a, a, a red jaguar. And their foundation myth is they, they uh, uh, the Olmecs believe that uh, their people came from the union of a woman with a jaguar. Uh, and, and she had a, a, a baby and um, the, these are the, the gods um, that uh, uh, somehow uh, relate to the Olmecs and their uh, uh, worship and their explanation using uh, gods to explain the world that makes sense out of it. Um, but that's as good of a uh, creation myth as any, I suppose. Um, and so the, the, the result was a were jaguar, a chimera, a combination of uh, uh, humans and, and jaguars. The downturn uh, uh, mouth is, is typical. There's a cleft um, always in uh, the face. And here's another uh, were jaguar um, uh, a product of God uh, to, to be feared or worship, we don't know because there's no, no writing. Uh, this is all uh, supposition. Uh, so the, the jaguar. Um, and uh, these are called axes, but they're, they're uh, ceremonial. They're for rituals. Um, and so this gets to the larger question uh, 
what already we're going to see, and I'll show you a few examples, the start of themes that are going to continue right on down through the Aztecs. Some of these themes we, we've been uh, al already exposed to. Here's a, 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 the feathered serpent. We certainly see that in, in Aztec uh, art. Um, the other uh, legacy uh, is ball games. And this uh, uh, explains the term Olmec. Who knows what the these early people called themselves? Olmec wasn't, uh, uh, we don't know their language. We don't know what they called themselves. Um, Olmec is an Aztec. Uh, and all refers to rubber, to the rubber balls that, that were um, fashioned by them in their uh, ball games. And we, we've seen in all the uh, cultures, in Mayan culture, Chichen Itza, the, the, uh, the ball field. Um, and, and we can talk about uh, the consequences of losing a, 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 a ball game. But all uh, refers to rubber, and so Old Mac is the rubber uh, a people, um, and the the ball game is one of the the things uh, uh, the themes that uh, they start. So this is the the continuity hypothesis. There's so much that that starts, so many themes that start in uh, Old Mac times that we see carried on down. Um, so. Uh, let's look at a, a few more of them. Uh, the king and uh, the headdress. Um, th this headdress has been analyzed every which way at Sunday. There's so much in, in this, uh, uh, from sharks to serpents, um, and uh, a lot of themes get in, uh, put into these uh, ceremonial uh, headdresses. And we see pictures of Montezuma with uh, um, headdress. So this, but this is this is where where it starts. Uh, the the, uh, the king, the alpha male, uh, is going to have that that headdress. Um, the uh, again another feathered uh, serpent. Uh, this one on, on a, a cave uh, mural. Um, and pyramids. So this is the, the Ur pyramid, the first pyramid, the largest pyramid in, in the Olmec. Um, even um, uh, here we are 3,000 years uh, later um, in, uh, with erosion, uh, but this uh, mound of, uh, of dirt still stands 120. Uh, uh, feet high. It's certainly not as grand as the pyramids we're going to see later, but it it's a start. Um, now, one other uh, legacy and tradition is this idea of bloodletting, and it starts innocently enough um, with the theory that human beings. Um, owe a debt of gratitude to the gods that created them. And the theory went that the gods need uh, blood and they uh, created humans by with their own blood. So they just need a few bits of repayment um, uh, for uh, uh, their generosity in, in donating their blood to the, the, the new uh, human race. So there are many instruments uh, and, and artifacts that have been thought to be part of a bloodletting uh, ceremony. It's amazing to me how they can come up with the, these uh, explanations and some of them might be wrong. Um, but uh, I think we, we go with, uh, um, and I don't have the tools to uh, critically review each one of the theories, 
Um, but I'm going to go with, with the, uh, 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 the uh, archaeological consensus on what some of these things uh, mean. Um, and, and here's another one. And it turns out, fortunately, that with the Olmecs, um, the idea was that royal blood was the best way to repay. So that's going to be very different when we get the Aztec times, right? But in the beginning, it was innocent enough. Uh, the, 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 the royals just have to bleed a little bit on uh, uh, every public occasion. Instead of the Star Spangled Banner, you, you, the, the, the royal donates a little bit of his blood uh, to uh, the gods out of gratitude. Um, and then uh, this continues in the uh, Mayan time. Uh, and here, this ties two themes together. The, th this is a, a queen. They've, they've got a name for her because, as you'll see, when we do the Mayans, now they've developed language. So we know a kind of what's going on, at least more than we know with the Olmecs. The Olmecs is just a guess. But this is a queen. And she has pierced her tongue and is uh, donating her blood the, uh, uh, to the priest who's officiating um, at the beginning of some um, a public event. Um, so uh, next week, uh, when we get deep into Mayan, uh, there are going to be some examples of where the men get their blood from. And it's not a comfortable thought. Um, so uh, the other issue is, huh, did, did it stop with just a little bit of bleeding uh, to appease the gods? Or what about this human sacrifice thing? Did it go beyond just giving the gods a little bit of blood, preferably royal? Or did you have to sacrifice whole uh, humans and all their blood? And there are, uh, we don't know, but there are a couple of uh, themes that the uh, archaeologists have glommed on to. And one is the limp baby. Um, so uh, the, the and, and this is involves the wear jaguar uh, a sacrifice to the wear uh, jaguar um, in other uh, situations a baby is usually active but limp uh, uh, babies was this a, a sign of, of human uh, sacrifice uh, out of gratitude for the gods who uh, donated their blood so that uh, humans could be created. Now, I think this is one of the most interesting of uh, the, the uh, sculptures. Um, look at that. Um, I mean, just in aesthetic terms and the, uh, the expression on the face. Uh, notice the downturned mouth that we've seen uh, uh, so often. Um, but, uh, this is um, possibly another limp baby. Um, this is the interpretation that's, that's been put on it. So is this a confirmation of the, uh, in the same theme as the, the previous uh, statue? Um, some people say, no, no, you're reading too much into it. There's, there's other places. Let's look at the symbolism on the surrounding uh, wall. And maybe this theme relates more to um, the spiritual journeys of, of human origins and those, these other uh, uh, signs uh, on the wall. And there's four of them I'm going to show you. And you be the judge. All this is pretty recent. This statue was found by a couple of kids playing in uh, 1965. Uh, so that, that's recent for some of us. Um, the, um, um, but let's look at the, uh, the, the symbolism around there. I'm just gonna show you the uh, schematic. 
um, around uh, this uh, statue in the cave. Um, and and on, I guess there are some of these that are actually on the bodies, but we, we in the round, but we can't, can't see it. Um, one is the banded eye god, um, and uh, who knows what it, what it is? But here are the the uh, uh, particular uh, features that the archaeologists are are trying to interpret. Um, this is the uh, a dragon, um, and uh, the. Uh, 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 a very common uh, uh, motif. Um, and this gives rise to whether there is a pantheon, whether the Olmecs actually had a pantheon that would feature uh, uh, these two for, for starters. And then for a third member would be the, the bird monster uh, with uh, flame eyebrows. Um, another common motif. Um, and then the fish are shark monster, uh, which was uh, seen in that headdress I, I showed you uh, earlier. So uh, uh, what were they thinking? Uh, uh, we don't know. They didn't have uh, 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 writing, but they have um, the beginning of, of, of glyphs. Um, and this is uh, uh, the schematic of um, uh, uh, a bird uh, saying three aja um, who, that may have related uh, to a, uh, a priest. Um, any, at some point, uh, they found 62 glyphs. Again, this is pretty recent in, in uh, uh, 2002. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Mayan glyphs, so uh, uh, not as many as that, and we don't know what their uh, uh, meaning is, but uh, it's been called a proto-Mayan. So it wasn't like all of a sudden the Mayans invented writing. It, it was an evolution, and some of it may have started uh, with the Olmecs. We can't say they have a written language uh, 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 that we can understand uh, at all, um, but uh, it, we, we see some of the beginnings of the symbolism that was used by, by the uh, Mayans. And particularly in the isthmus that we've been talking about, there was an Isthmian uh, script. Um, uh, for sure, some of it uh, had the, uh, 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 the, the, the numerical system that the Mayans used. We, we talked about that in our brief uh, introduction. So they can tell from uh, this still um, the uh, date um, that, that, that this was uh, uh, made. And it puts the things into a cosmological uh, framework and beginning of a calendar. Um, and the, these are uh, some of the uh, representative, uh, some of the glyphs of the 62 glyphs that you see in this, what's called uh, Epi -Ol Olmec script. So uh, after Olmec, um, uh, or really early Mayan, proto Mayan. So where Epi Olmec uh, leaves and, and proto Mayan begins, uh, uh, who knows, but it may be sometime around uh, 32 uh, CE. Um, so this is just a schematic uh, for what I'm going to uh, show you. This is a king with a subject, and this is um, uh, on a cave. Um, and and uh, uh, look, at it's a polychrome. Um, uh, that's a sophistication. Um, sure, you see polychrome in some of the uh, caves in, in Europe, but uh, uh, that's a jump. So um, uh, the formative uh, uh, period uh, uh, here ends. Um, also, Olmec uh, uh, tombs have, have survived of their uh, uh, great leaders. 
um, uh, we know late, later on uh, that uh, uh, the uh, like the Egyptians, the Mayan um, rulers will will be buried with the same expectation that uh, the Egyptians had for the pharaohs that uh, if they're given a royal uh, burial, th that somehow can confer uh, life after death on, on uh, not only on the pharaoh, but also on everybody. So uh, uh, we, we don't see that so much with the uh, Olmecs, but uh, we're gonna see it with the Mayans. Um, and this is a, a relief of uh, uh, a king uh, with his headdress and, and his, his royal uh, uh, club. Um, more relief entitled The King. Um, and then uh, again, this, this is uh, the headdress. Uh, and this is uh, now got a name, the Harvester Mountain Lord uh, is uh, uh, the name of that. Now, there, there are uh, a, a lot more um, uh, nominees and, and one guy has come up with a theory that there were eight um, uh, main gods in, in the Pantheon and uh, uh, a lot of his evidence for this is kind of obscure, but uh, I'll just give you the names. Uh, the, the, the god of corn, that, that's no surprise. Um, the, uh, there's a, di a disagreement between this, uh, whether th this is a, a were jaguar, which look like the were jaguars we saw before, or are actually the rain spirit. So there's a lot of unsettled um, feelings, but uh, the, uh, beyond a few, uh, a handful of gods, there may have been a larger uh, pantheon. And then anything that they find, they uh, like this clay bowl, um, they, they come up with, well, maybe this is the banded uh, eye god. And they, and they have all kinds of uh, theories about uh, what it is and argue about it. Um, and we've already talked about the feathered serpent and the, the fish or shark monster that we saw in the headdress. So that, that's eight. Um, other random um, uh, striking um, uh, 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 statues, uh, stone that is, have come down to us. Uh, we're not sure of the meaning, but look at this one. This is quite something. Um, the, um, and for now, um, uh, we're gonna leave the Olmecs. Uh, we're, our next stop uh, will be um, uh, the, the people that are come, starting to come down from the north and then uh, I'll get back to uh, the Mayans. We'll spend a lot of time uh, with them because uh, arguably that's, that's really the peak of um, uh, the uh, Mesoamerican civilizations that uh, Juan Jose uh, uh, told us we'd find. And sure enough, um, we, uh, we found them. So I'll stop here and entertain any questions or uh, uh, anything you want to discuss. Um, have at it. Uh, you know, the limp babies, are they dead? That's why they're limp? Yeah, that's the theory. Oh. I mean, we, we, oh, okay. we that, that's the theory. Why else would they be limp? I know. Uh, so they're sacrificing dead babies. Well, uh, uh, the the thought was that they're sacrificing live babies who become dead. Oh. Uh, yeah. But it's just um, a theory, and and uh, uh, the, this whole human sacrifice uh, has to start somewhere, um, because. It's, it's really uh, uh, taken off by the time uh, 
Cortez reach, uh, reaches uh, in Tenochtitlan. Yeah, so all those um, place names, I saw there was like a mix of Spanish and then what languages, indigenous languages. So those are all, none of those are Olmec, right? Because we just don't know anything. Right. Th those are, even the ones in indigenous languages are place names of other groups from later. Yeah, I, I can't make uh, much out of the meaning of the, the place names. You know, a lot of- How the, did they find out that all meant rubber? What's that? Because- How did uh, they find out that the, the, that's all meant rubber? Well, the, that ties into what Tim was just saying. A lot of the names are Aztec names. So the, 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 who knows what the original names were? They, they didn't have writing. So the Aztecs came, came down and gave everything uh, names that made sense to them. If not a Aztecs, it could have been uh, uh, Teotihuacanos. It could have been uh, Toltecs. Um, I mean, it could have been Mayan uh, names uh, for uh, Olmec uh, villages. Probably a lot of- I'm assuming that's, that's pretty similar probably to like some of the really ancient Middle Eastern civilizations that we don't really know a lot about where maybe the name, even the name of the group itself is from a different era. Yeah, yeah, right. we're just guessing. So rubber came from the new world. Right. You remember the famous story when we visited in, in Brazil, how the British yeah. smuggled out the rubber plant yeah. and, got the, to, and they finally got them to Malaysia? Yeah, it yeah. was, it was a, a totally a, a new world phenomenon. But of course- but I see rubber trees in all of our travels in Latin America. Has anybody else seen rubber trees in we Latin America? We've rubber trees, Ico. We, we saw rubber being made in uh, a stop in uh, Brazil. In fact- oh, Yeah, but that was way out in the country. Okay. I mean, you don't see rubber plantations like you see in um, Malaysia or- um, you Well, know. not now because the uh, Britain has figured a more economical way to do it. Or, or the British Empire figured out a more economical way to do it in the in the old world. Um, Did, was rubber a very big uh, economic um, engine in the old world, or it never did become? No, it took off with uh, automobiles. In the old world, I mean, in in the new world. Well, it, it, in the world e economy. Um, uh, I think Brazil was very protective when the demand for rubber went up uh, in the uh, Industrial Revolution. Brazil tried to uh, keep it a monopoly, uh, but that's when the British came in and said, hey, the Industrial Revolution is our deal and we need the rubber, uh, and they smuggled it out. Okay, folks, anything else? I'll, I'll turn off the recording and then you can uh, uh, share your most uh, intimate story. <laughs> I don't have an intimate story, but Iko, thank you for asking because I never realized that about rubber.